Aloha, and welcome to another episode of The Creative Life, a collaborative production between the American Creativity Association, Austin Global, and shown on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, I'm pleased to introduce you to our guest, and I am Darlene Boyd, your host for today. And our guest is Dr. Manage Matagi. And Dr. Manage joins us from Los Angeles. And today we are going to talk about uh, an experience that I, I know we all have had, and that is the experience of happiness and uh, why it's so difficult not to maintain those experiences. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, perhaps a good place to start is to ask you what you feel is the, the true meaning of happiness. Thank you, darling, for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, just one uh, little, small little uh, correction. I'm not a psychotherapist because that oh. that would that would mean that I would be clinically a psychologist, clinical psychologist. I'm not. I'm an organizational psychologist, which is really the uh, the realm of corporate and uh, just really cognitive and behavioral psychologists to train people. In in any realm, but I'm not a clinical psychotherapist. So just oh, to... I'm so glad you clarified that for us, and I apologize yeah. for uh, no, 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 misinterpreting no, no, no. what was uh, what I was learning about you. So thank yeah. you, thank you. So what about this meaning of happiness that uh, so <laughs> in and out of at times? <laughs> yeah, so happiness is really a broad term, really. Um, that means different things, and it includes a lot of different components. Also, it usually, you know, just uh, just to, to name a few of these components: social connection, uh, health and wellness, uh, education, having material, having safety, having psychological uh, peacefulness and joyfulness, and being recognized by others. Uh, so, happiness is something that is. Uh, really a feeling based, right? And it depends on uh, each individual, how they experience it. You may feel it when you're in nature and then you lose it when somebody criticizes you. You know, you may experience it when you uh, buy something new and then uh, research shows that as soon as you are, you you give the money you got the material or you <laughs> give the money, that's the highest a sense of joy and happiness people feel. And right after that, it goes down. It's just, uh, it's a downward effect uh, to that happiness. So it's um, very fleeting. It's not reliable when we base it on material and base it on having things, accomplishing things. People go to great lengths to become educated, have careers that are really incredibly a high level or be in, uh, you know, leadership positions or um, just accomplish so much. And then still their sense of contentment and happiness is not steady, is not reliable, is not for sure, is not guaranteed. And so we as humans, no matter how much advancement we've made, you know, we've, the human society has advanced a lot in science, in, in technology, in medicine, in psychology, in, in, you know, farming, in clothing, in you name it. I mean, you name it, uh, all these different facets that we have advanced. And yet we don't have our happiness figure it out. We don't have it down, you know. No matter how much we accumulate um, training, knowledge, material, wealth, stuff, right, um, we don't have it down. So it's, to me, I've, I've really, I'm one of the people who, who has gone the, especially the American route to go and accomplish the highest you can. Uh, and uh, you get the promise of you have the right to pursue happiness, right? It's interesting terminology to pursue, mm-hmm. not to have, not to be happy, but to pursue it. <laughs> and so by the nature of pursuing, right, it's like you're always running after this thing that is ahead of you. 
And it, it almost seems that it's in your grasp. So basically, it's just, I suppose, just a few steps ahead of you where you think you're, or when you do feel happy, Dr. Matagi, it seems that you can go for a while with this happiness, this feeling of happiness or euphoria, perhaps that's a description of it. Uh, and then something happens that just seems to, as one would say, pull the rug up from under you. Right, it's totally right. unexpected. And exactly. so there certainly are peaks and valleys. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, even when everything is perfect, you have the best relationship, you have the best children, you have the best job, you have the best you know, health, you have the best house, you have the best car, you have everything perfect the way you want it. Still, we cannot avoid a few things. We cannot avoid aging. We cannot avoid getting sick. We cannot avoid dying. We cannot avoid losing things that we love, people, things that we love. We can't avoid that. We cannot beat that. Nobody the most genius people in on earth. I mean, I remember when, um, uh, who was it? Uh, oh my God, my my mind just went blank. Uh, this owner of this tech company, I think it was Apple. Um, uh, his name is on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, when he had cancer, like this oh, man Steve, has Steve Jobs. Yes. Yes, right, Steve Jobs. Sorry. So when he, you know, he had access to the most and highest mm -hmm. level of science, technology, the money, the everything, but he couldn't solve it. He couldn't solve this cancer. He had to die. And, and billions of people and beings died. So this is the, the issue. And then we also, another thing that we cannot avoid is cause and effect. Everything has every action has a reaction. Every thought has a has a uh, imprint, leaves an imprint. So so when we don't sort of so just segueing into the problem with not getting happiness and having it and maintaining it or sustaining it is because we are not educated, not trained to be in alignment with these also natural systems, you know? So Aging. there's so, there's so yeah. much out of our control. Yeah. It seems that I hear you saying that there, there are these things that are completely out of our troll, out of our control. And some of them are very obvious to, to us and some of us not sure we can prepare for them. They're unprepared and, and they take us right. by surprise. Right, but there are other right. things in, in society and in the environment that are out of our control. And well, probably the, the, so this is the us. thing. So so when we are not educated and not really understand the some principles that govern our lives, mm -hmm. for example, change, change transformation from this body that's like this right now, this body falls apart. This is this is just the natural thing that happens. It's not personal. It's not happening to me. It's not happening to you. It's not happening to anybody. It is the way it is. And it happens to everything that is material, right? And made out of elements. So, so if we know this, then when loss happens, when somebody passes away, when... Uh, we're not so dramatically shocked and intensely in grief and pain and, and depending on our relationship like you know that yeah my, I lost my son right and there is nothing no I mean this kind of a loss is not to reckon with there is nobody can handle this without an intense amount of sort of understanding and training and and uh, being in alignment with with the the laws of nature, the laws of the way things are, and then you said uh, the you brought the word control. Uh, we as humans have come to not like discomfort, negative. We don't like something that doesn't go our way, and we have sort of developed or created the concept of control. Control is not really 
you know, doesn't really exist in nature. It's cause and effect. So when we want to control something and uh, we believe we can and we, we really do our best to do it and then something else happens and it does, it goes totally, our, whatever we did uh, falls apart, then we become extremely, you know, bewildered dissatisfied and then we constantly part of this happiness for us humans is also to constantly be able to control our conditions around us there are some things we can you know and then there are some things we cannot and so if when we learn to go with the with to see to understand the the, the flow of things then you you know you become you become okay. You can have a sense of, you see, happiness is really an absence of suffering. If there was no irritation, no agitation, no judgment, no criticism, no envy, no, when there is no, when these don't exist, and I'm not saying they should be done forever, no, but the moments that we don't have these kinds of feelings of, tension, tightness, agitation, stress, anxiety, worry, when we don't have it, in the absence of it, there is peacefulness. There is a sense of being okay, except we don't pay attention to it either. We don't oh. see that. We don't see that I don't have a, I don't have a toothache right now. <laughs> I only, <laughs> I only want, you know, think about my teeth when I, when they hurt, right? <laughs> You're very, you're very open, Dr. Mataji, about sharing uh, the loss of your son. Where did you turn for your strength? Was it an inner strength or who did you turn to? Oh, to, no, to get no, 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 no inner strength <laughs> there. No, look, I mean, when I, when he passed away, it was so sudden and so unexpected and so tragic that I, for 35 days, I fainted every day. My my brain was shut down. I couldn't handle it. Understood. For a whole year, I, I felt like I have, a, you know, if I knew then, felt like having COVID nonstop, nonstop for a whole year. So my what I turned to was my training and education and practices of the Buddha's teachings first. Second, bringing them into my own experience and feeling them. And the, the key, the heart of it was self-compassion. You know, when the tsunamis of grief would hit, when the pain would be unbearable, first thing that would hit me would be, oh my God, I, will, I have no being ever, ever experienced this. I don't care who they are, how bad or good, it doesn't matter. Because this is unbearable. The second thing would be like, oh my God, this is painful. And I I would feel my own pain. You know what I mean? That empathy, uh, that compassion would be for myself. And and the fact that uh, I, why am I, I am, I shouldn't be obligated. You know what I mean? From the sense of I'm a mother, archaically mothers that you're done you're done when a child dies i mean i used to say those beginning days i would say well what kind of a system is this the child dies the mother should die with her, with the child the system is wrong this universal system universal you, know, you, leave, you take a child you leave the mother behind is cruel it's very cruel you know i would say that but then then I realized it's up to me, you know, that I am not obligated to suffer, to continue to suffer. And, and so with a lot of training, of course, because, because your brain needs to be programmed to, for it to be auto, on automatic, uh, you know, so you're not efforting so much all the time. You, you're, you're suffering, you're dying, and you're trying to be happy. It's very difficult, you know. So little by little by little with many different types of trainings, mental training, heart training, uh, reality seeing, 
and understanding that, look, this happens. It didn't happen to me. When I think of him as my son, I suffer. When I think of him as a human being who a spirit, a soul, a, a essence that came into this body, I was privileged to, you know, bring the body into this world. And my mother was privileged to bring me, you know, for parents we are. And so it's not my loss. It's not something I have lost. However, it's easy to say this now, you know, because during the grief, I I recognized something very deeply. I understood this is not this is not a bonding matter of bonding that has been broken. It's not a matter of psychological, emotional, anything. It's neurological. It's physiological. It's within every cell in my body. Every cell in my body has lost. That's why the pain is so, so intense. Every cell in my eyes, in my eyelashes, my hair, my bones, my nails, everything. You know what I mean? By my blood, because he is and, part and of it. And in this. your memory, too. And then the memories, oh, they are the most painful. <laughs> oh, my God. Pictures. I could not see his pictures. I could not have them around. For two years, we, we put pictures away. I, I couldn't see them. My His father would send me videos of him. I couldn't watch them. I would die to watch them, you know? So little by little by little, by really understanding um, how life works, having my own sense of this happiness we are after, that I want it and I will have it and I will not waver. I will not give up. I want my happiness. And and it doesn't come from having all these things, you know, because happiness went from, um, you know, went into sort of the more material we have. It's not even a matter of convenience or comfort. It's a matter of luxury, matter of, having excessive access to more stuff, more more wealth, more, you know, it will if other people see me, they approve of me, then I'm happy. Then if other people think I'm okay, then I'm okay. You know, the pretense came about. And then and then now it's gone so far that we are not happy with the way we look. Age, True. aging, it, we, we resist aging. <laughs> look, no matter how much we do, do all this stuff that it's, I mean, with all the respect, I'm not against anything like that. But, but just knowing that that is not going to give us a sense of. That's right. It's not the same person we're looking in the mirror and of, since we're aging. All of a sudden, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel like me when I look in the mirror. Yes. But the thing is, it's also going to be, it's going to be done. No matter how much we fix it, it's not going to remain for a long time and time is passing and we are getting there. So it's just that we 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 got it wrong. We did not get uh, the right appropriate. See, we, we human beings, we don't have a template. We don't come with a pre-programmed life of a human template. We are supposed to learn from our parents and people around us. This is how the... Are you saying then that we may be focusing on the wrong thing in, in our seeking happiness as on yes. our journey? A lot a lot of times because we don't we don't get it the we don't get the training for it necessarily accurately. You know, our brain has biases. It comes with biases. Now the brain neuroscience shows that we come with uh, truth bias. Novelty bias and confirmation bias. So if somebody says something, especially as a child, we're growing up. Anybody who says anything, we take it as the truth. What do I know? I don't know anything. I'm going to take it as the truth. That becomes the basis for anything else that's going to confirm that. I will pay attention to that. I will confirm it because my brain, it's an efficiency process. 
It's because the brain doesn't have the resources to go check everything, and it doesn't have a template to check it against, right? The re a reality template doesn't know. So, um, so we believe things that are that are faulty, that are interpretations, that we are misunderstanding. We think they are true, you know, and or uh, some things we learn that are effective, some things we learn that are not effective, a lot of things we don't learn. Constantly trying to learn. See, these podcasts or this thing is supposed <laughs> to teach something, right? <laughs> because we're constantly trying to learn the right way. I mean, I, I swear, it's not easy to be a human. So, so we can't judge ourselves and judge anybody. Really, this is very important to know. We can't judge the people who are doing the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, sometimes that, I suppose we, we focus too much on judging ourselves to see if we've done the right thing. And maybe perhaps right, right. we should just move forward with a, look, with a smile. Look, it's not easy to be a human. We have all maybe, these difficulties. <laughs> that, that, might be, that might be the problem. Uh, what is... So. What are some of the greatest sources of happiness, in your opinion, or in, in, in the work you've done with clients? Yeah. Have you identified well, some? Well, the thing is, uh, I believe that if happiness is not something that can be sustained and we lose it, then, then, it, then we have the loss, the grief, right? So looking for something that's dependable for example having a having a peace a sense of i was talking to a colleague of mine he was talking about equanimity you know equanimity is being steady connected being peaceful being um being sort of um at ease right so what makes you at ease when you do something that has an outcome the outcome, if the outcome has a negative, sort of a harmful outcome, you can't be peaceful. You know, you can't be peaceful. When you for it, take it from smallest thing, for example, a fly is flying by, right? Mm -hmm. And and you hate the fly because it's just in your domain. Wow, how dare this fly in my Absolutely. domain? <laughs> Nobody says, look, first of all, they don't live long. Second of all, they are very important to the environment. Third mm -hmm. of all, they're not here to annoy you. They're just living their life. You know, that's just that's what they do. They're living their life. Fourthly, you know, you don't have to be upset about it. You don't have to be irritated by it. You can somehow, you know, just revert the, the push, you know, get them to go another way or do something without the agony. Nobody tells us this. No, the first thing we do, kill the fly. So that, that, that kill the fly, I am justified. I feel justified that it is my right to live and be. This is my home. My walls, my windows, I know I paid for it. I know it. Uh, every mm -hmm. month I pay for this, right? Mm -hmm. This kind of mindset and excluding other forms of being, thinking that they shouldn't be. I, I often wonder if happiness levels are shaped by social groups and, and perhaps uh, groups like families and ha people that are happier or we perceive as happier than are we. Um, and that they're able to increase the happiness of the people around them. Uh, might that be why we sometimes maybe subtly or, or not even directly thinking that we seek out people to do things with and to be around that make us feel happy and don't pull us down? Right. Well, we don't, of course, we are social beings. We cannot live alone. We don't live alone. Even if we think we are alone, we are, we're not alone because everything we need everything we have has have provided by some other people whether we see them or not so we are social beings we depend on each other and we also need yes we also need this emotional attachment with people who are peaceful who are safe who are kind who are compassionate but that's very that's hard to find for some people it's not readily available so 
you know so so this is what i'm talking about when i'm talking about the the fly it has a direct impact on the attitude of a person you want to have peaceful conversation with if a person is agitated it's so easily over anything mm-hmm. right over anything like i had a client who was you know a high executive and he just he was so irritated about everything and especially the wrong doing of others so i picked up my telephone i dropped it at the time it was a different kind of telephone and i was hoping it doesn't break but i dropped it and then i asked him so can you when you get upset you are going against the, this having happened it's a war you're going to lose Does that make sense? So yeah. this has already dropped. The, when you get upset, you're going against the moment that it dropped, hit the ground, and it's already happened, and you cannot undo it, undo this happened, having happened of it. Of course. <laughs> you know, of course. Right? Yeah. And so it just, all of a sudden, it clicked to him that, you know, any smart person who is highly, uh, you know, achieve, achiever, like he was, he is, he realized oh my god i'm wasting my being upset it's got going to a war that i'm going to lose why should i get upset instead of getting upset about this thing has happened now i can ha- save the energy save the peacefulness not give it up and then go after fixing it okay so now what is because once you get upset about something then the upsetness becomes the issue you hate that you're upset then you want to relieve the upsetness now you forget about the issue that was oh this thing has fallen maybe i look get it, pick it up and look at it is it broken do i need to do something with it or not you know but you're caught up in the upsetness <laughs> so this is where these are the the things that are in the way of happiness in order to be happy is not to go get something is to take the obstacles away from your happiness to understand how life works to understand when we develop systems do uh, create policies procedures uh, at corporate level at government level i mean i'm tired of people coming to me all the time and complaining about the government the government the government the government you know the oil companies the corporations the, the yeah, just constantly you know blaming the system whereas the system is these people are one p person at a time human mm-hmm. beings who are imperfect who are also trying to be happy who are also trying to do do it right whatever that means you know do it right. number yes whether it's do it right for more money in my in their pocket or do it right for social or do it they are they are in beings human beings we can't just keep blaming them we need to look at ourselves and see what can i do right now today mm-hmm. the climate change look the destruction of this planet is been by our own kind our own human kind the scientists are blaming us for having such an incredible negative impact on the planet because of this happiness business we want more we want more and we want more <laughs> you know we thinking that's going to make us happy well we want more too we've come to the end of our time and i feel like we we have so much more that that we could say and discuss uh i'm really grateful to you Uh, for making the time to be with us and uh doctor maybe McCoy. i can maybe i can give a couple of uh things that we can be aware of one is cultivating right. our own sense of awareness awareness of our own feelings our own thoughts our own actions where are they leading what impact will they have improving the intention behind whatever we do the intention of not harming intention of having good will for all beings an intention of letting go being generous letting go of material of judgment of opinion of anything 
definitely these three, judgment. Yes. These three things can really improve our sense of well-being and happiness. Good wanting goodwill for everyone, everyone, no matter what. Thinking about what am I doing that is going to harm? Maybe I shouldn't do it. And then letting go. These three things are enough. I, I appreciate that that you were able to share those three things. There's there are three simple things that I think we could leave our discussion and, and hold on to and, and try to put into practice in our life. So once again, I'm, I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to listen to you. And, and I, I think we're happy at this moment for having heard your words <laughs> of wisdom. And we'll, we'll try to uh, sustain ourselves and hold on to those words as well. And with that, to our viewers, I thank you for joining us to get today. You've been listening to the wisdom of Manhaji Matagi, Dr. Matagi. And uh, with that, we look forward to seeing you again and also look forward to having our viewers join us again for the next episode of The Creative Life. And with that, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.